So allow me to share the screen once you start. Thanks, sir. Dakshakshmi, sir, go host Ronaldo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. Dr. Rohan, sir, good evening. Namaste. Namaste, namaste. Nice to see you, Imran. Is my slide uh, visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. DHMA never fails to grab an opportunity to create awareness among general masses regarding health and homeopathy by way of conducting CMEs, health camps, and various other events since it was established and registered in 1932 by Dr. Yudhvi Singh. So here we are. I, Dr. Sakshi Gupta, General Secretary DHMA, welcome you all to this special webinar conducted to mark the World No Tobacco Day today. World No Tobacco Day was created by World Health Organization in 1987 to draw global attention towards the tobacco epidemic and the preventable death and diseases it causes. The theme of World No Tobacco Day 2022 is based on tobacco is killing us and our planet because tobacco kills over 8 million people every year and destroys our environment, further harming human health through the cultivation, production, distribution, consumption, and post-consumer waste. So let us stay connected till the end to witness a wonderful session tonight with the expert of the field, Dr. Rohan with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Deepak, and thank you, Dr. Sakshi. Uh, Sakshi, right? Um, yes, sir. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, without wasting any time uh, from my side, uh, I would like to start immediately because I have a lot to share. Uh, and uh, if you have any doubts, you can just note it down so that we can have at the end of the session. But I want uh, you to ask me more questions because uh, that is the whole purpose of today's session. Uh, I'll be talking certain basic things, which may be very basic. You might feel they are basic, but they are actually important. I'm going to share whatever practical things are required. I mean, I have an experience of working uh, in different setups and doing tobacco de-addiction as well as tobacco uh, awareness also. But de-addiction is something uh, which uh, is important at this level. So here I'll be focusing more on de-addiction and how you want to talk with patient, how you're going to deal with patient. So uh, tobacco de addiction is nothing to do with any pathy like allopathy or Ayurveda or homeopathy. But if you know the basics of tobacco de addiction, then you can definitely uh, include your homeopathic treatment and it would work wonders once you understand the basics of it. So uh, let's start for uh, today's session. Uh, so to begin with, why is this uh, kind of tobacco de addiction important? So uh, try to understand the background of it. So there was a survey done called as Global Adult Tobacco Survey, GATS survey. This is a pretty uh, big level survey. Uh, it is done in almost 22 different countries across the globe. Uh, it is done in India also. And there is World Health Organization, country governments are involved into it. So it's a pretty big level survey, a pretty authentic survey. So when the survey was first done in 2009 and 10, the results were very shocking. Like 48% of Indian adult males and 20% of Indian adult females consume some of the other kind of tobacco products. Can you imagine 48%? It's almost 50%. So if 50% of our population is consuming tobacco, isn't it something which is very alarming, which is very shocking? Half of our adult population, when the survey was repeated in 2016 and 17, it had dropped from 48 to 42%. But imagine a hugely populated country like India with a population of more than 135 crores, even 40% of adult population is a huge number. So the point here I'm trying to make is the this is a fact that these are, in India, the consumption is much more. We are the second largest producer of tobacco and second largest consumer of tobacco. This is the one side of the story. Another side is now there are enough scientific evidences, the enough research done, okay, how tobacco causes cancers, how tobacco causes other deadly diseases. Ten, eight out of 10 death causing diseases, tobacco is the cause of it. So can you understand tobacco is a big problem with as a causative factor for many diseases. So this is a something very serious issue. 
as they call this is one of the most preventable cause of death no one forces us to eat uh, tobacco it is our choice we eat tobacco so this is one of the most preventable cause of death that's the reason we are talking on this topic today and we want to save many people uh, before they get up into get into some deadly diseases so just to start with some basics when a healthy person comes in contact with a tobacco in any form what happens is this it's okay i'm not here to scare you but this is a fact i work closely with cancer patients and cancer hospitals so i understand what is the end result of tobacco consumption of any form so this is the end result and this is something which you need to convey to general public both tobacco consumers and non consumers because non consumers won't start it and consumers would take a decision to stop it so this is the end result of exposure to any kind of tobacco product so where does tobacco come from tobacco comes from tobacco farm why i'm specifying this because tobacco farm has a speciality it's something unique tobacco farm is the only farm which doesn't require fencing or protection why tobacco farm doesn't require protection because even animals don't eat it again this is something which you need to tell people even animals don't eat tobacco now my point is not that ki what the thing which animals are not eating should human beings eat or not my point is why animals don't eat it animals don't eat it because it's not edible plant if you take a tobacco leaf from the farm and give it to the laboratory just to understand what are the different chemicals present into it even at that time so tobacco leaf from the farm has lot of chemicals which are hazardous to the body which are poisonous even nicotine is present at that time so the point is it is not a edible plant it is a poisonous plant over a period of time when cigarette making companies prepare cigarette gutka making companies prepare gutkas more and more chemicals harmful chemicals are added into it and the latest research says that when a person consumes one cigarette single cigarette he is exposed to almost 4000 to 7000 chemicals out of which 200 are proven poisonous 60 to 60 uh, 60 to 65 chemicals are proven carcinogenic now what are carcinogenic chemicals these are those chemicals which have capacity to produce cancers so can you imagine if a person is consuming tobacco in different forms day in day out how many chemicals he is consuming and it if he is consuming so many hazardous chemicals every day it is bound to affect the body it is bound to cause lot of deadly diseases so this is something which you need to convey to general public what people have a perception that sharu khan smoking or glamour attached to it is something a reality but reality is not this you need to show what is the reality in reality is what it causes lot of harmful effects on the health we we'll talk about in detail about the health hazards but it is important to convey it to them second is financial loss now how financial loss a single cigarette will cost you almost 10 to 15 rupees if a person is smoking one cigarette he is losing almost 10 to uh, 10 cigarettes cost 100 to 150 rupees in a day so can you imagine in a week into month in a year how many direct money loss but there are certain tobacco products which are little cheaper like 10 20 rupees the smokeless tobacco products especially But imagine the disease what they are buying. The cancer treatments today are very costly. So the entire family is affected, and the family comes under pressure and the psychological stress. So this is the reality. So reality is that tobacco causes a lot of deadly, life-threatening diseases. This is something which is need to convey because believe me, I have counselled more than five thousand patients, and I have actually asked them what is the reason. And people do tell me they were influenced by this media, television, and they actually say that we started by seeing Shahrukh Khan smoking. this is something a fact today in india people do follow this film stars and uh, these are impacting their lives in a big way so i'll talk about briefly about tobacco products so what are the two types of major tobacco products are smoking and chewing or smokeless tobacco the smoking is that which the smoke comes when you fire lit it so the main products in smoking are cigarettes bds hookahs and cheroots so why we need to talk about products is because a lot of misconceptions surround it so cigarette people feel it has a filter and bd doesn't have a filter so cigarettes are less harmful but it is nothing like that cigarette and bds are equally harmful so at this point remember three important points first point is no matter what tobacco product it is it is always going to be harmful the moment you see there is tobacco present it is definitely going to be harmful to the body second is no matter what quantity you are consuming it like you will have people that tell you they have one cigarette one pan or one gutka but still it is going to be harmful quantity doesn't matter and third is no matter what duration you are consuming it people feel that only if they consume for like 10 to 15 years only then they it their chances that it will cause diseases but it's not true even after consumption for shorter duration it has it will cause you problem so no matter what tobacco product it is no matter what quantity it is and no matter what duration it is it is still going to be harmful so cigarettes and bds both are equally harmful or the cigarette companies promote it like gold flake light now there is nothing light in the gold flake light 
or lady cigarette low tar cigarette slim cigarette these are all just to fool people they are all marketing gimmicks every cigarette will cause cancer so again this is something which we need to inform people bds now bds is an organized sector the cost is very low they are easily available you might find difficult to get medicines at night from a pharmacy but you might easily get a pan bd shop across india so there is easy access and cheap rate that is the reason that bd consumption is much more in india like cigarettes they are equally dangerous hookahs now there is something huge misconception around is hookahs people feel hookahs are safe which is absolutely wrong hookahs are four times more dangerous than a cigarette some five to six years back supreme court came up with the law of they removed a ban on hookah parlors but that doesn't mean hookahs are safe hookahs are four times more dangerous the reason being first of all the session itself the cigarette won't last for more than 5 to 10 minutes but the hookah sessions are almost between 30 to 40 minutes to more than that so minimum it is 30 to 40 minutes so the exposure to one hookah session is like exposure to smoking 25 to 30 cigarettes secondly the hookah companies claim that they are flavored into a flavors hookah but believe me even on the flavor packet if you see they would be mentioned over there nicotine content so and so so there is no hookah flavor with this without tobacco another thing is there is something called as interstitial lung disease so what is this interstitial lung disease basically our lungs are elastic organ because of the elasticity of the tissue the lung expands and contract when we breathe this elasticity is lost because of this in this disease and the major reasons are cigarette smoking bd smoking and hookah smoking the other reasons like environmental pollution and industrial waste but the major reasons are cigarette bd and hookah smoking i have personally seen patients with hookah smoking coming to chest physician for this interstitial lung disease So this is something very important which we need to convey because unfortunately you see a lot of youngsters today below a 20 age going to the hookah parlors and this is an entry point once they start with hookah they will graduate to cigarettes and other tobacco products another thing is cheroots or uh, cigars these are basically tobacco wrapped in a tobacco leaf itself the smaller forms are called as cheroots locally available in the rural areas and cigars are like the bigger form of it same thing equally dangerous or there is a new product which is coming up which you should be aware of is electronic cigarettes they are wrongly called as electronic cigarettes now they are called as electronic nicotine delivery systems ends so what is the difference between cigarette and electronic cigarette the only difference is here the tobacco is present in the liquid form their batteries present because of which the combustion happens and the smokes come out of it that is the only difference they are available in different shapes like vapes and mods but again the the mechanism remain the same the only difference is the tobacco here is present in liquid form and because it, the tobacco is present over here it causes same impact on the body like any other tobacco product it affects each and every part of the body it affects at the cellular and at dna level also that's a reason more than 22 countries have completely banned electronic cigarettes india has also banned it completely the sale of electronic cigarette is not allowed in india from 2019 itself so you need to be aware if you must have not seen such products but again it is very popular among youngsters if electronic cigarettes are not available there is something called as e hookahs available which are somewhat similar and they are available in india so please be careful and don't miss this product if uh, and don't miss about asking this product when a patient comes to you now there are another product like smokeless or chewing tobacco products now there are n number of chewing tobacco products i am just showing few of them after working in the field for so many years still i cannot claim that i know all the chewing tobacco products because india is such a diverse country that more than religions we have tobacco products in india like every state has its own speciality from if you change from one state to another the packaging changes the method of consumption changes the flavor changes i mean this it's a n number of tobacco products so i said in the beginning itself always remember no matter what tobacco product it is it is going to be harmful so just to mention a few of them the tobacco what we have with lime or uh, self lime or chuna what you call that is the most common thing along with the, uh, there are other thing like khara or khaini which is a pre mixed form of a uh, self lime then there is gutka now gutka is the certain states like maharashtra which are banned gutka but again it is still smuggled and it is available in black uh, in black but it the cost has increased that is why the people Uh, shift the tobacco uh, products now why the shift happens that i'll tell you later the pan masalas now pan masala is something very interesting pan masala the base is supari araka nut and not tobacco but pan masalas are equally dangerous there is lot of research available today in tata memorial hospital especially people coming from northeast because of this consumption of this uh, supari araka nut and landing into pre cancerous and cancerous lesions so it is equally dangerous now there is a law in india called as scotpa cigarette and other tobacco product act according to this act it is not uh, allowed for the tobacco companies to advertise or promote this tobacco products directly so they you don't see advertisements like we used to see in previous days about uche log uchi pasand manik san or bar baratiyon ka swagat hum paan par aakshay karenge so all this direct advertising is banned so this tobacco companies uh, come up with this pseudo marketing 
they come up with this uh, advertisement like zuba kese you see ajay devgan sharukh khan and now even akshay kumar coming up and doing this zuba kese advertisement which is the same vimal brand which has a gutka brand now they cannot promote the gutka so they come up with this zuba kesri ad of vimal pan masala which is a similar to the packing and everything is same to a gutka so unfortunately these actors are paid a lot but they are destroying generations together because they get influence and start consuming this particular products once they start with pan masala then they graduate to gutka also snuff snuff is nothing but tobacco is finely powdered and taken through the nose it is also called a chikni tapkir or naswar in local languages another thing is masheri now masheri is again tobacco is burnt the powder is created and applied on the gums this is more popular in rural areas especially among the women there are sophisticated uh, uh, i mean there are uh, branded masheri pouches available which are like shahin mishri also uh, tobacco pan the pan is something very interesting because pan is common across india but if it is a tobacco pan definitely it is dangerous because there is tobacco but people claim that it is a sweet pan meetha pan sada pan simple pan but try to understand what are the ingredients most of the time there is something called a skimam into it now what is a skimam it is a tobacco paste itself if you are having a simple pan sada pan but still if you are uh, consuming this skimam you are unknowingly consuming tobacco another thing is super yarak nut which i already explained it is equally dangerous so if you are having this pan or sada pan or your patient is having this you need to understand what are the ingredients into it because unknowingly the patient may be consuming tobacco and there is another product like uh, tobacco toothpaste sophisticated toothpaste in the brand of brand name ipco and dento back i have personally seen a rich marwadi family after having breakfast applying this ipco imagine it is so common in india so these are few products as, as i said but you should be aware of the local products available in an area so that you don't miss a patient because you may ask only about one product but if the person is consuming some different product you might miss it so please understand the tobacco products in your area Uh, you must have seen this advertisement. I mean, they show it before a movie begins. That there is a young guy, 24 years old, by the name Mukesh. He says, "Ki mera naam Mukesh hai. Main four years old gutka khata tha." Now imagine that 24 years old guy consuming gutka for not more than four years comes to Tata Memorial Hospital. This is a real case, and he actually died during the treatment. Very unfortunate. But a 24 year old guy dying because of cancer. Now, this is a fact of uh, cancer that it doesn't happen only of a longer. or uh, duration if you are consuming it even after shorter duration of consumption of tobacco people get into life threatening diseases another thing is the chemicals what i am talking about the carcinogenic or deadly chemicals so just to make the people understand what are these chemicals you can talk about detergent powder having ammonia you have cadmium in your batteries your acetone in your paint so i asked them are you going to eat your detergent powder are you, are you going to eat your batteries or drink your paint so they said no why because it is poisonous they know that this is poison but a person who is consuming tobacco in any form is actually consuming this product so when you show them see this slide or this photograph they will understand how much harm they are causing to the body by daily consuming this tobacco because this is the harmful uh, daily uh, routine products which they are aware of this is in personal practice this have caused a good impact and people have actually decided to quit after observing this particular thing now why this is important again as i said more than 10 to 12 13 lakh people die every year because of tobacco related tobacco consumption related diseases which is more than hiv aids malaria and tobacco and tuberculosis combined together so that's occurring because of hiv aids malaria and tuberculosis combined together even then that's occurring only because of tobacco consumption related illnesses is much more than that that huge is the impact of tobacco and that is the reason we are here today we need to understand we need to help more and more people second hand smoking i think most of you are aware about it if you are not smoking but you are directly exposed to a smoke coming out from the other person it is called as second hand smoking or passive smoking but there is something called as third hand smoking which you need to be aware if you are uh, if you enter a empty room or a lobby or a lift or uh, somewhere where there is no one but you feel that someone must have smoked over here why do you feel that because definitely someone must have smoked over there and the particles remain there for a longer time and this is called as third hand smoking if you are exposed to that particles this is most common with children who are living with parents who are in the same room and the still this parents are smoking in that room even if they are not smoking when the children are there but still the particles will remain and children are affected there is a huge research available on third hand smoking you need to be aware of it and it is equally dangerous so if you see the short term impact of uh, tobacco consumption like ear uh, infection sore throat yellow decay feet bad breath smelly hair smelly disorders wrinkles on the skin early wrinkles itching in the eyes irritation uh, watering in the eyes uh, loss of uh, ability to think and concentrate and uh, certain signs in the mouth uh, especially with the chewing tobacco a uh, white spots so we call it leukoplakia uh, red spots like erythroplakia and the mouth opening reducing called as submucous fibrosis now this conditions called as white spots red spots or uh, submucous fibrosis are basically called as precancerous conditions 
if a person doesn't stop uh, for getting this particular signs then these are definitely going to land up into cancers research says that a person who has consumed tobacco for more than 3 years more than 50% will start showing one of this particular sign so in your history taking if you come across a person who says that i have consumed particular tobacco product for more than 3 years immediately look out for white spot red spot or a submucous fibrosis the mouth opening reducing so that you can inform him and show him that this is the beginning and if you don't stop now it is definitely going to cancer and believe me this is definitely going to motivate him to make the decision to quit there are certain ulcers which don't heal for more than 3 weeks you should immediately get it ruled out for cancers Again, more again common with tobacco consumers. Now, because the tobacco consumption is so high in India, and oral cancers, ninety percent reason is tobacco consumption. We are today number one in oral cancers in the world. It's a very unfortunate thing. There are can less cancer doctors and more cancer patients today. If I give an example of a Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai itself, if the person is detected with cancer, the treatment starts after one and half month. That much is the waiting period over here. unfortunately people come from all over india over here and they have to stay on food parts and uh, you know with a very bad condition the family has to suffer because it's not a simple thing uh tobacco smoking especially uh, people feel it causes cancer of lungs only but it's not it causes cancer of almost more than 16 different body parts in chronic uh, conditions like chronic bronchitis reduced lung function asthma coronary heart disease heart attack emphysema gum diseases tuberculosis now how tuberculosis and tobacco are related so tobacco has inherent capacity to kill your appetite tobacco consumption kills your appetite tobacco khane se bhook mar jati hai if you uh, don't if you uh, don't feel hungry you won't eat and if you don't eat your immunity will stop dropping and once your immunity drops you are exposed to infectious diseases and the most common in india is tuberculosis of course covid but now but still you will see covid more than covid there are tuberculosis cases so tuberculosis is so common in india that is the reason uh, the the fact and the logic is because of tobacco consumption your uh, appetite goes down and that is how you don't feel hungry and immunity goes down same with diabetes if a person is consuming tobacco it will find it very difficult to maintain the proper sugar levels cataract early cataract develop because of tobacco consumption gangrene the blood vessels gets constricted the size reduces and the peripheral blood vessels get totally blocked and the parts are decaying as you know it is called as gangrene it is also called as smoker's gangrene causes weakness it causes if your blood supply to the brain is reduced it will cause you paralysis if your blood supply to the heart is reduced it will cause you heart attacks so it affects the nerves also it affects of vision also with the macular degeneration it causes impotence in men very important point to convey to men it causes impotence in men it is a proven thing even women you can see the lot of girls today are into smoking and the girls smoking has gone up in a big way unfortunately these are educated girls who understand about it it is mentioned on the tobacco packet itself but still they are doing it but they don't understand they are affecting their reproductive life uh, in a big way so it causes infertility miscarriage still birth low birth weight babies uh, sudden infant death syndromes so you see the ivf clinics are increasing today and one of the major causes is smoking so you need to convey this very clearly how they are affecting their future life i have been talking a lot of negative things but to patient you should also talk about positive things and in my personal experience positive talking and positive things explaining to people have motivated them more than the fear factor of cancer and negative things so what are the benefits so been benefits also you should talk about health benefits social and economic benefits economic benefit definitely money would be saved and future health cost could be saved the money your savings won't go into the hospital treatment but it will go into something good for your family social benefits will be more acceptable your children won't do it if you are doing it health benefits very important you need to buy hard disk like i explained this to general people like if you fall down and you get an injury an injury won't remain for life long why it don't remain for life long because there is continuous cell regeneration repair happening so people understand this much of science so you tell them similarly that wound won't remain for life long when you stop consuming tobacco whatever damage that tobacco has caused to your organs will also start getting into repair so they can correlate to it and we should tell them with proper uh, research you should show them the research results like there is a proper study available which shows that what are the good changes happening in the body from 20 minutes of quitting smoking to 15 years of quitting smoking So within twenty minutes, your pulse rate and blood pressure drops, starts getting back to normal. Within twelve hours, your carbon monoxide level starts getting back to normal. Within two to twelve weeks, your lung function test starts improving. Within five to ten years, your risk to heart attack drops by fifty percent. Stroke, paralysis, all heart attack risk drops by fifty percent. Within fifteen years, you are as good as a non-smoker for any cardiovascular disease risk. I mean, the person who has never smoked and the person who has quit smoking 15 years back come to a same level for having any cardiovascular disease risk. Can you imagine to what level your body can do repair? 
unbelievable so this is a something which is need to convey to the people and this is something which will motivate them and in my personal practice this has actually uh, helped them to make a decision because the earlier the quit the earlier they will get out of uh, and get better uh, and get back to normal so why do people get into addiction so i'll just explain you the addiction topic itself there is Uh, explained by uh, this topic has been explained by Dr. Anand Narkarni, a senior psychiatrist who has done contributed a good work in the addiction field. So there are four reasons, important reasons why do people get into addiction. The first reason is the characteristics of the chemicals. So like gold has some characteristic, silver and mercury have some characteristic. There is some the, the nicotine has a characteristic that nicotine is one of the most addictive substance. There is something in alcohol, something in narcotic drugs because this uh, chemicals in this particular drugs, the characteristic of this drug is that they are addictive. So, if ten people smoke for the first time, there are high chances that eight to nine of them will get into the addiction because, by nature, nicotine is one of the most addictive substance in the world. Second is personality. If your personality is good enough, you won't fall prey to peer pressure or stressful conditions, stressful environment. That is the the reason the personality plays an important role. Third is friend and family support. If your friend circle and family support is good, people won't get into addiction. And if they are get if they do get into addiction, you need to come out of it. We need to support them with a good family and friend support. stressful condition it is often observed that research says that if the person is exposed to a stressful or environment and uh, condition the chances of them getting into addictions are much more so the person gets caught into the characteristic of the chemicals and stressful conditions if you want to remove them we have to work on their personality and also support with them with the family and friend support so why do people smoke specifically if you see and chew tobacco uh, why do people start consuming in spite of the packet mentioning over there it was it is injurious So a lot of people have fixed idea like a lot of curiosity. You should try everything once in life, or cancer won't happen to me. Like in COVID, people feel COVID won't happen to me. So they are st strong, wrong personal beliefs. Peer pressure, another big cause. Uh, a lot of people tell uh, that we started with our friends. We just did a survey with the girls smoking, and a lot of girls said that they started with the pressure of their uh, friends. People have strong per wrong perceptions like. it's a cool factor fashionable stylish because our actors unfortunately and the movies showcase it in that way in advertisements that is they get paid for it and but they are actually leading a wrong example people have a long misconception that because tobacco kills your appetite it is used to stay slim but this is absolutely wrong way because the repercussions are going to be very bad people tobacco companies have a huge uh, marketing uh, budget so they market it in such a way that they attract their consumers or target audiences they have people have strong misconcept like it reduces stress see what happens is basically when nicotine goes to your receptors dopamine is released and this dopamine is nothing but a feel good hormone which gives you a, a feeling of a happiness same dopamine is released when you have a favorite food in front of you or when you have you are listening to your favorite song or you are with your friends same dopamine is released now this dopamine again uh, is uh, the reason that for the feel good factor but that doesn't mean smoking is can reduce your tension because the dopamine stops and when the nicotine level drops it causes or it leads the person into severe depression also so it has a dual effect so tension definitely is not going to be uh, removed with the consumption of tobacco so this is another thing which we need to counsel and explain the person ki how this tobacco is affecting them rather than helping them to get out of the stress constipation another big misconception people uh, have huge misconception that tobacco is used uh, useful in having smooth bowel movements absolutely wrong but the person who says that he has he consumes tobacco only for smooth bowel movements in the morning you should ask him when did you start consuming it he will tell you almost age, after 15 years of age so first 15 years without tobacco still he was having smooth bowel movement second is uh, if they have proper salad or uh, vegetables and good fibrous food it will help in stool formation and they don't require any kind of uh, smoking or tobacco consumption for smooth bowel movement third thing they can have uh, early morning uh, they can have hot water hot tea which will have the same gastrocolic reflex and will help in peristaltic movements so they don't require uh, to, to consume tobacco for that more than this if uh, people uh, are still suffering they can go to a doctor and the doctor will help them to with medicines uh, and no doctor will ever prescribe you okay you have uh, constipation then why don't you have three bds or three cigarettes or three gutkas this no one is going to say that because it's not a medicine so people should not take it in the form of medicine so again this counseling this uh, myth breaking is very important now we do understand ki about the tobacco uh, treatment part of it so when you talk about tobacco treatment we need to understand that when a person comes to us 
he is having a different uh, mindset and and this mindset could be well explained with the psychological theory uh, with the stages of mind what are the stages of mind these are contem uh, pre contemplation contemplation preparation action maintenance and relapse so i'll explain this with a uh, another example so you can correlate with it so if there is a fat person overweight person and people are telling him ki you are so fat that you do you need to do something you will get uh, affected because of it but a fat person says no i am okay with it i don't feel i am fat similarly a smoker people are telling him doctors are telling but he says no i am okay with it i am enjoying it so this is a peak contemplation stage where he has not even accepted that he is uh, he is doing something wrong so fat person doesn't feel he is fat second is contemplation where the fat person starts thinking ki i am uh, if the doctor is telling or i am finding it difficult to walk i think i should do something about this i think i am really fat so he has actually start thinking about it started thinking about it similarly a smoker started starts thinking that okay i am not able to climb or even a doctor is saying i am having complaint also of breathing so i think i should do something about it so he started thinking it is contemplation stage now from pre contemplation he has come to a contemplation stage still he has not done anything so what is preparation in this preparation stage the fat person is what he will do he will do the gym uh, membership he'll pay for the gym membership he has not started going to it but he started preparing for it so this is called as preparation stage what a smoker will do he will give a quit date he from so and so date i will quit so he is preparing himself for that so this is a preparation stage what is the action stage when the action stage when the actual action happens when the fat person starts going to the gym it is called he has taken the action so it's called the action stage similarly smoker has stopped smoking so this is action it is called as action stage after the action there are two possibilities either the person will continue or he may stop and go back to the normal stage so this is called as maintenance or relapse if they are going with it it will call as maintenance and if they are coming back to the same position like the fat person stops going and the smoker again starts smoking ten cigarettes it will call as relapse so when a person comes to you first understand what stage of mind he is he might be any of this one not necessary always that person who comes to you comes in the preparation or action stage there might be people who come in a pre contemplation stage where they are not in decided so the strategy of your counseling your treatment will differ from each stage of mind second is the tobacco de addiction is classified into three types the amar akbar anthony i don't know how many of you all know this movie but this is just to explain you about the three important types it is called amar akbar anthony just to remember so that you remember that there are three types the three types are physical psychological and behavioral addiction Now, what is physical addiction? Physical addiction means the person has actual physical level changes in the body. That is why it is called as physical addiction. When this nicotine goes to your receptor, there are receptor level changes happening in the body, and these receptors keep on demanding for more and more nicotine. The receptors increase. So this there is a physical receptor level change. That is why this is called as physical addiction. Now, as I said, this nicotine reaches the brain, dopamine is released, and these receptors keep on demanding for nicotine. This is a physical addiction. So, what happens when the person stops or doesn't get nicotine per dose? The person will go into withdrawal. So, these withdrawal symptoms are like, first of all, they are not never ever life threatening. That is the reason tobacco addiction can be done at a day care basis. You did not admit the patient, you know, uh, did not hospitalize the patient, and if you see most of the uh, withdrawal symptoms, which are properly researched, they are all mind related. and they don't last for more than 4 weeks only one which is last for more than 4 weeks is increased appetite like with tobacco the appetite goes down when you stop tobacco appetite increases other than that all the symptoms of don't last for more than 4 weeks and they are or mind related so how to determine whether a patient is physically addicted when a person comes to you so there is something called as a fagostrom scale it is basically a battery of questions you need to ask and the scoring if this more you feel you know that this is a physically dependent person so if you don't have time you can ask two major questions what is the time how soon after you wake up you smoke your first cigarette so why this is important because when a person sleeps for 8 to 10 hours the receptors are deprived of nicotine so the first thing in the morning when they wake up they will start searching for a tobacco product so that itself shows that how much physically dependent they are second is the number of times they are having it like they having more than 20 30 cigarettes it itself shows that the dependence is high so other things is there battery of questions you can go through it but this is how we can determine if the person is physically addicted second is psychological addiction the psychological addiction the word says the psychological addiction it the strong psychological association as i just explained to you people have strong psychological uh, association with stress or with constipation so unless and until you break this association with proper counseling and proper history taking once you come to know and you should counsel them no matter what best treatment you are giving them still they will go back to it because there is a strong psychological association third is the behavioral addiction the behavioral addiction is if you are doing something over a period of time it becomes part of your routine you can correlate it with certain triggers like time place person and thing people will tell you that i don't normally smoke but only in evening i need to smoke 
that is time I've, only if i go to this place or club i need to smoke that is place if i uh, with this particular friends i need to smoke that is people and last uh, thing like if after tea or with food after food i need to have pan or you know of with cutting chai i need to smoke or with alcohol i need to smoke so this time place person thing is something which becomes a part of your behavior now see where a person comes to you who may be either in a behavioral addiction or he could be in a behavioral psychological and uh, combination of all three so this is again important so when you are counseling uh, when you uh, are giving treatment if the person is only physically depend uh, only behaviorally dependent then your strategy would be different but if it is a combination your strategy would be different so this is again very important to classify the person what addiction he is so we come to the directly to the treatment part so treatment part who has given proper uh, protocol to be followed for this particular treatment which is called as fi strategy this is a simple strategy i'll just quickly run through it this is again very important uh, because uh, this to standardize the counseling and they have involved certain psychological theories into it like uh, the cognitive behavioral uh, theory and all which helps the, for us for a tobacco de addiction who are starting it for the first time to stick to this and get proper uh, results so what are this uh, five so five is include ask advise assess assist and arrange ask is nothing nothing but ask the person who comes to you so who are you going to ask ask every person because sometimes we get prejudice ki this is a female or this is a nice looking person how should i ask no ask every person otherwise you will miss a patient what are you going to ask of course you have to ask the patterns and what are the tobacco products and how much, how long you are using it and all how are you going to ask of course in a friendly way because that is all medical ethics we follow when are you going to ask of course when privacy not in front of all and where are you going to us in a healthcare setup because that is the where the person is comfortable so this is just a simple thing like ask the person about it second is once you ask you should advise now this advice should be very strong clear and personalized why because once the person gets this advice he should get the seriousness of it even the doctor was saying he said he is very serious and i should do something about it so they should be clear and strong it should be personalized you can relate to it with a personal uh, ongoing existing ailment so that he can correlate with it and he again get motivated to quit because of it so it could be personalized with with his current illness so once you ask the person you advise him the next time come is assessing not necessary that every person who comes to you would be ready to quit so how to assess the thing so the person once you advise either he may be not interested in quitting like in the pre contemplation stage or he may be interested but not confident he will be able to do it so there are two possibilities first not uh, uh, ready to quit and second ready but not confident so the person who is ready and confident you can move to the next a that is the assist stage and for those people who are not ready or not confident there is something other strategy called as a five r strategy first we we'll look at the patient who are ready and who are confident what we have to assist them you have to assist them with the proper action plans you have to give them a action plan like this is okay you are ready to quit now follow this one two three four steps and you will be able to quit so what are the steps what are the action plans so there are different action plans i'll just discuss few so first action plan is the star strategy now this is star strategy s t a r this is acronym s is a set a quit date but normally i tell them today itself is a quit date because in india we don't give them a quit date because there are high chances of that they won't stick to it so just tell him today is your new birthday and stick to it second tell your family members and your friends why this is important because you just saw the withdrawals the majority of the withdrawals are mind related like irritability anger if the person is stopping and he is getting angry and he fighting with the family the family should not fight back with him so that he goes back to the uh, smoking so this telling the family member is very important and friend and family uh, friends if they are also into it at least they won't avoid doing it in front of him so that he won't get triggered for it so that is the next thing that is that tell your family members that is anticipate challenges this is the most important thing anticipating challenges is like ask him ki what happens if you don't get tobacco product he will tell you i get headache or i get stomach ache so prepare him for that give him medication beforehand for that so once he is in the process of quitting he is well equipped with anything if happens to him so this is very important which is called as anticipate challenges r is remove all the tobacco products again these are certain triggers uh, in the room in the car in the office so remove all the smoking or tobacco products so that he doesn't get trigger because of it so this is a simple strategy s t a r easy to remember easy to implement another strategy is a for 3d strategy danger situation nothing but again similar to anticipate challenges developing coping skill so coping skill like anger management skills so you also have to uh, overcome the urge of smoking the urge would la- not last for more than 5 minutes and would completely go away within 20 minutes so the first 5 minutes he need to give engage himself so how can he do it you can give him some strategy like a 4d strategy drink water deep breathing delay or do something else so this is a simple strategy like drink water 
deep breathing delay and do something else again discuss and provide basic form give understand and make him understand in his language what he understands don't talk with certain medical terms which he don't understand so talking in the patient's language is very important that is my personal experience so similarly you can also maintain a quick diary and also that it maintains the withdrawals into it so when you talk to him is more clear and you can help him to get over it but again this is more with the uh, educated kind of a population who can write down their uh, proper fit withdrawals what they are facing so this is about the assist stage you have to give them a quick plan and the last thing is the arrange so ask advise assess assist and arrange arranging is nothing but if there is a proper there is some you find is underlying illness or there is something more counseling if required you can send him to a specialist or if there is something uh, uh, not but but still a follow up is important in tobacco addiction or any kind of addiction the follow up is more important because that is when the relapse or the withdrawal symptoms come in and if you are able to uh, help the people to overcome the withdrawals then definitely you can get out of the addiction so that is the last stage called as arrange so all those people who are not ready or uh, having uh, difficult uh, not confident for them as i said there something called as fire Now, what is this fire strategy? This is nothing again, very simple thing. There is something called as motivational interviewing. So, when you are actually implementing this fire strategy, you are actually involve uh, implementing motivational interviewing. So, what is this fire? Basically, there are relevance, risk of tobacco use, rewards of tobacco quitting, roadblocks of quitting, and repetition. So, what are relevance? Relevance is nothing but make it relevant to them. The why it is important to quit. so make them understand ki what is the present condition how it is getting affected because of tobacco how more and more relevant you make it more and more chances that he will decide to quit increases risk risk not don't just talk about cancers or health risk talk about the financial and social risk also and rewards don't just talk about uh, economic and social reward talk about of uh, health rewards so as i said by heart certain things what are the good changes happening in the body road blocks road blocks is nothing but again understanding why he is not confident what are the Uh, previous experiences he had faced when he tried to quit, and why he is so fearing for that, and just help him overcome those particular roadblocks, and again reassess the patient and give him a proper strategy like the STAR strategy. So this is a just to say that you have to spend a little more time with such kind of people by implementing this fire. As I said, this is also uh, we are implementing a motivational interviewing strategy. You can also tailor made particular uh, strategy if the person is. Uh, says quitting is not important like is pre contemplation stage for such person there is no way that you can give him a strategy for them you need to first get him to a level where he can get a strategy so for them you should explain about the risk and rewards and tell them okay whenever you think of quitting i am there to help you but these are the risk you are facing and these are the rewards and the benefits you will get quitting is too hard so if the person says ki he wants to quit but it's hard try to understand why he feels so and overcome the roadblock so you can also customize this particular fire strategy so that comes to our another uh, last part of it the pharmacotherapy because pharmacotherapy as i said tobacco addiction is not related to any pathy this nicotine replacement is not, nothing but as a supplement so when you are taking tobacco as i said you are consuming thousands of chemicals out of so many hundreds of poisonous and 60 to 65 carcinogenic but the main culprit is nicotine brain receptors just want nicotine and nothing other thing no other chemicals now when you get an urge you to take this tobacco product because brain wants nicotine so what they have done is they have removed the other chemicals and just prepared nicotine in crude form in the form of chewing gum and lozenges and patches when a person gets this urge they take this chewing gum put a patch the nicotine reaches the receptors the receptors urge subsides so because they are just replacing the nicotine in tobacco into crude form this is called as nicotine replacement therapy nrt Now these NRTs are available in different forms, as I said, in chewing gum patches or lozenges. So how are these patches and chewing gums used? So patches are basically nothing but they are, as I said, it's a 24-hour patch. You have to apply it on your skin where there is maximum exposure, like on the arm, below the arms, or behind the back, where you get a maximum skin exposure. This is a 24-hour release uh, patch where it releases nicotine for 24 hours. So ideally, we tell them to apply it after they take a bath in the morning, so that they remove it on the next day morning when they take a bath. as i said it's a 24 hour play their brain gets receptors get nicotine continuously so imagine a person who is smoking like 20 30 cigarettes every day and because of the nicotine pass the receptors are getting the nicotine so he is not smoked a single cigarette imagine the confidence what he will get the person who is smoking 20 cigarettes since last 5 10 years and immediately because of the nicotine patch then the nicotine receptors are getting the nicotine he is not getting the urge because the receptors are getting nicotine so confidence increases after that we slowly taper the dose so the ideal treatment is 4 weeks you to start with 21 mg if he is smoking more than 20 cigarettes then reduce it to 14 mg patch for 4 weeks then 7 mg patch for 4 weeks 
this is the way you should taper the nicotine dose slowly similarly the chewing gum if the person is highly dependent smoking more than 20 cigarettes start with four if he is less uh, smoking less than that start with 2 mg chewing gum same with the lozenges and patches sometimes what happens in india we have a smokeless chewing uh, tobacco products for so there you should understand and apply your little bit common sense ki if the you feel that he is highly dependent start with 4 mg or if you feel he is not highly dependent start with 2 mg so this is very simple about a nicotine replacement therapy non pharmacological therapy there is bupropion verniclin bupropion certain uh, people do face uh, depression kind of symptoms and bupropion is nothing but anti depression verniclin actually is a blocker which blocks the receptors so even after uh, taking verniclin the, the dopamine is also little bit reduced so it is mimics the effect of nicotine so verniclin is again uh, used by psychiatrist but as i said tobacco addiction if you understand the basics you can now treat the withdrawals because every person is uh, different and they will come up with different withdrawals so you have a best opportunity to take a proper history and take a proper uh, constitutional medicine and also support them with the symptomatic treatment with the homeopathic treatment so now i have just spoken to you about the basics now it's up to you how you take up this case and treat them with homeopathically but this understanding this basic is important because believe me tobacco addiction is 80% counseling when i started practicing i thought it uh, the treatment would be important but when after counseling more than 5000 patients and with what the research says counseling is very important how you talk with the person how rapport good rapport you build up with the patient how much the patient trust you how much the patient is able to overcome the withdrawals how you break the psychological association all this matters and how you deal with the patient with your talking with doing regular follow ups so this is something which is very important when you are practicing tobacco addiction so i'll quickly give you certain tips which i have personally experienced like stick to the basics understand the basics as i said understand the uh, stage of mind whether is what kind stage of mind when he comes to you and what are the different types of tobacco uh, addictions he is facing accordingly design your treatment protocol remember five fire as fire strategy it will make your life more simpler use uh, play cards uh, for tobacco products because you cannot remember all the 100 products or you cannot ask them 100 products you can show them this so that you don't miss a product and the person will tell you okay i have this so you don't miss a patient write and explain this is another thing given uh, uh, to actually uh, told to me by a psychiatrist which when you write and explain your patient's attention is more and that is how we can perceive and understand more and it will help you while counseling the person use illustrations also don't miss a follow up with the patient as i said follow up in any d addiction treatment not only tobacco follow up is important in tobacco d addiction as i said the follow ups are, should be more frequent in the first four weeks because you saw the withdrawals are more frequent in the first four weeks so you should follow every week in the first four week later you can follow up like two months four months six months but initially one month it should be a weekly follow up because the withdrawals are more frequent in the first four weeks first uh, four weeks in the month follow up uh, uh, is uh, phone follow up is also sufficient today everyone has a phone not necessary the person should come and meet you in face to face but even a phone phone follow up encouraging the patient understanding his withdrawal supporting him will help the person to uh, uh, good support so that he doesn't succumb to the withdrawals different setup has different results so when you learn this and start practicing and uh, you don't compare yourself with others because every setup has its own uh, results like the results may vary if you are practicing in an ipd or hospitalized kind of patients the results are very good like above 50% if you are practicing in a clinic setup it might be little less again if you are practicing in a production company or that factory setup again it would differ so it are different so don't compare your results with any other results you can use some the apps and technology so that to remind a person or it can be used in a successful way but again whatever apps and all you are using the basic thing don't forget Uh, when you are using chewing gums and nartis, avoid coffee and juice that we normally do with homeopathic medicines as well. <clears throat> uh, as I said, by heart certain things so that it will impress the person. This is my personal experience. I am telling you, if you by heart certain things, it will definitely impress the patient. Uh, certain motivational things you should keep on saying, which will encourage the patient. I am not going to details of this. uh and like me i would urge each and every doctor attending this session to, as a moral responsibility to also do awareness spread awareness because people don't know that tobacco addiction uh, i mean it, it is possible to quit and people don't know that is help available first of all they need to understand people feel it is impossible to quit or it is very difficult that is not the fact 
it is possible to quit and there is help available and the research says that if they get proper help proper healthcare provider provides the help the chances of the success increase almost four times and be con consistent don't see that once you start practice and you don't get a result research says that a person might take 2 to 12 attempts to before he quits don't tell this to the patient but you don't get disheartened for me if a person comes to me even at 12th time he has re uh, relapsed i will counsel him with the same enthusiasm because i know it is difficult and as a doctor never give up be consistent keep on doing it thank you so much uh, this is my number and email id uh, i would like to take your question answer sessions if you have any but thank you so much thank you so much sir for such a wonderful session i would like uh, request our learners to uh, kindly write down their questions or they may raise their hand if they wish to ask something we are uh, going live on facebook too and uh, i would request those uh, attendees to please write their questions in the comment section and here i would request dr kalpana to uh, check if somebody has any questions and please raise to a speaker thank you dr sachi and thank you dr rohan sir such a informative and wonderful session today thank you uh, uh, sir but aapne itna acha samjhaya na ki abhi queries koi bhi nahi hai sabne bahut acche se samajh liya hai That's fine, but I've given my number in case आगे जाके भी किसी को कोई क्वेरी आती है कोई पेशेंट के बारे में कुछ पूछना है तो डेफिनेटली दे कैन गेट बैक टू मी आई पुट माई नंबर एंड साक्षी ऑल्सो हैज माई नंबर सर ऑल्सो हैज माई नंबर बट आई वॉन्ट टू मेक अ पॉइंट इज टूडे दिस नोट अ बैक टूडे लेट्स मेक इट थिंक एवरी पेशेंट हु कम्स टू अस वी नीड टू इंक्लूड दिस इन हिस्ट्री टेकिंग सो दैट वी डोंट मिस अ पेशेंट एंड एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग वन पर्सन विल हेल्प द एंटायर फैमिली थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर रोहन दिस इज रियली वंडरफुल आप वन शॉट में मतलब बिना किसी रुकावट के और बहुत परफेक्ट एक शो लिया मैं बस इतना जानना चाहता हूँ सर एस जो होमोपैथिक है मतलब जो होमोपैथिक प्रिस्क्रिप्शन है जैसे आपने बता दिया कि जो काउंसलिंग है वो 80 परसेंट पार्ट तो वो हो गया लेकिन 20 परसेंट पार्ट में जो होमोपैथिक मेडिसिन क्योंकि हम लोग यहाँ पे सब लोग होमोपैथ्स हैं और वो ये जानना चाहते हैं कि जो जो कॉमन कॉमन मेडिसिन है जो आपने कहीं यूज की हूँ या आपको ऐसा लगा हो कि ये जो सेट ऑफ मेडिसिन है ये थोड़ा ट्वेंटी परसेंट में हाँ जैसे कि मैंने कहा कि देखो सी होमोपैथी क्लासिकल होमोपैथी डजेंट बिलीव इन अ वन ट्रीटमेंट सूट सॉल काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग सो व्हेन यू प्रैक्टिस होमोपैथी वी आर वेरी क्लियर दैट द पर्सन इट्स अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेस्ड मेडिसिन एंड इन टबैको टू इट इज अप फ्रंट की एवरी पर्सन विल टेल यू अ डिफरेंट विदड्रॉवल सो इट हैज टू बी वेरी स्पेसिफिक टू द पर्सन सो आई डोंट थिंक एनी काइंड ऑफ टबैकम और दैट काइंड ऑफ मेडिसिन इज गोइंग टू हेल्प द पर्सन it has to be very specific and uh, symptomatic treatment don't treat the tobacco addiction treat the withdrawal what is facing if he facing an uh, insomnia you have to uh, treat insomnia if he is uh, uh, suffering from constipation you have to treat the constipation with your uh, constitutional medicine as per the patient's uh, constitution so i don't want to uh, you know uh, tell people that this is a magic remedy which is going to help there is no magic remedy for tobacco addiction thank you thank you sir thank you sir थैंक यू सर नाउ आई विल रिक्वेस्ट आवर पेट्रन सर डॉक्टर वीपी सिंह सर हमारे साथ हैं अबाउट द सेशन टुडे प्लीज सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर साक्षी गुप्ता फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू आवर टुडे स्पीकर डॉक्टर रोहन ठीक है उनका ये हमारा बहुत बड़ा सौभाग्य है कि हर टुडे को डे पे हमें और इन दोनों को याद रहता है एक्चुअली क्या है कि बहुत अच्छा डॉक्टर रोहन ने पिछली बार भी बहुत अच्छा बताया था और अब की बार भी उसने कुछ इम्प्लीमेंट करके बहुत अच्छा बताया है और ये निश्चित है कि जो सिगरेट स्मोकर या तम्बाकू यूजर्स होते हैं वो लेने से उनकी एक बार के में पांच से ग्यारह मिनट की आयु उनकी कम हो जाती है क्यों डॉक्टर रोहन और जितनी उनकी एज होती है उसमें बारह साल माइनस कर लेते हैं वो अपनी एज का तो मैं डॉक्टर रोहन के माध्यम से यही कहना चाहूंगा और अपने डीएचएम के मंच के द्वारा यही कहना चाहूंगा कि स्मोकिंग एंड टोबैको यूजर स्वीट किट आज से अगर इकतीस मई से हम ये लें कि हमें टोबैको नहीं लेना है तो हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ा ये सार्थक लेक्चर होगा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर रोहन अलॉन्ग विद अवर टूडे वेरी इमिनेंट टीम ऑफ द डी एच एम ए थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच Take care, everybody. Be safe. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, and uh, now on. Bye. Ron, sir. Good night. Sir.
sir on Amen. behalf of uh, our president she unfortunately she couldn't join us today because she's out of station and on behalf of the entire association i'd like to uh, just as a token of gratitude i'd like to share a certificate no problem thank you so much please accept this in the presence of our patrons sir and all our seniors as a gratitude sir thank you everyone looking forward for more such session and i have uh, today i have launched my quit buddy community and i would request or urge more and more doctors to be a part of the quit buddy community where we can mutually decide how to take this forward if you have certain queries and certain target audiences what to do and how to spread the awareness if you want to be a part of this campaign i would be looking forward for more and more people i would share the link with uh, dr sakshi uh, for for you all to go through it and you can be a part of it it's a non it's a totally voluntary thing uh, we don't charge anything for this but at the same time we will provide you with a lot of information uh, around this topic thank you thank you thank you sir i i'd like to thank everyone for joining us today our seniors patron dr vip singh sir our senior vice president dr tyagi president president ma'am is not there unfortunately and our media operating executive dr deepak sharma our vice president dr s p verma our chief advisor dr gitesh singh sir for taking out time from the busy schedules and the entire team in helping to make this happen thank you so much and dear learners please stay connected with us for more such informative sessions and those who wish to join our esteemed organization they may visit our website which is www.dhma.in or they may write to us at dhmadelhi at gmail dot com or contact us at nine seven double one four two three six one seven. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.